Hello and welcome to another beginner's guide to machine learning with ML5.js in JavaScript. So I'm here, it's been a while since I added a video to this playlist and a bunch of things about the ML5 library itself have changed. There's a new release. 0.3.1. Um, there is a brand new website, which you can find right here at ml5js.org. So to some extent, this video is really an update about the library, but I'm also going to look at one particular feature, a new feature of the library, sound classification. The machine learning model that I'm going to use in this video is the speech command recognizer. And this is a model available from Google as part of TensorFlow.js uh, models. Now, so this is a really important distinction. I am not here to train a sound classifier. I might do that in a future video and show you about how to apply transfer learning, which is something I did with images, also to sounds. I'm just going to make use of a freely available pre-trained machine learning model. And anytime you use one of those things, uh, even in just a playful and experimental way, which is what I'm doing, it's good to, to do a little bit of research and take a look at like, well, how is this trained? What was the data? How, what are the considerations uh, around how the data was collected? And so I encourage you to read through the uh, readme here on GitHub, and in particular, to click over and read the original paper um, about this speech commands model. And there you'll see, um, if you look, it talks about some of the data sets, like Mozilla's common voice data set, 500 hours from 20,000 different people, um, this Libri speech, 1,000 uh, hours of red English speech, I don't know how to say this, tidy digits, tidy digits, t digits, 25,000 digit sequences, which apparently was probably me, right? It's just like hours and hours of me reading this uh, random number book over and over again. But so I encourage you to check out this paper. Um, and you can also find code for how to use this model at TensorFlow.js uh, in the TFJS models GitHub repo itself. I also want to interrupt this video for a second to talk about how the sound classifier actually works. This is kind of a surprising little tidbit, and I'll come back to this more if at some point I create a video about training your own sound classifier. Now, there's different ways you could do this. This isn't the way to make a sound classifier, but this is the way that this particular model works. It's actually, shockingly, amazingly doing image classification. So if you imagine we have this thing that's called a convolutional neural network, this is the underlying architecture, the structure of that machine learning model that does, uh, that does the classification. Typically, this kind of model is something that we would put images in. Like we might have images of cats. We might have like an image of a turtle. Oh, that's not really a turtle, but whatever. So the idea is that we're sending these images in and getting back a label and maybe a confidence score. So it's the same idea, the only thing is now we want to send in audio and get back a label like up or you know one and a confidence score. So how would we convert sound into an image? Now again, there are other neural network architectures of which you could, could receive sound data in maybe a more direct fashion, but if you've ever looked at a graphic equalizer or some type of sound visualization system. I've made examples like this in P5. You can draw something that's often referred to as the spectrogram, which is basically a graph of all the various amplitudes of frequencies of the wave patterns of the sound itself. So if we took like a one second spectrogram and made that into an image, we could then send that image into a convolutional neural network saying that's the image that is produced from the spectrogram of somebody saying the word up. So underneath the hood, this machine learning system, even though it's designed to work with audio data, it first takes that audio data, converts it into an image, and then sends it through a very similar types of neural network architecture to standard image classification models. And you can read more about that in that paper itself. However, I'm going to show you how to access this model in a quick way uh, with the ML5 library. And this is the new as of you know, today, which is, I don't know, what's today's date? June 13th, 2019. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you how to use this with the ML5 library as it stands today. So I'm going to click here under reference. One thing you should see, there's a lot of new features have been added to the ML5 library. I'm going to come back and do videos about more of those. But the one I want to highlight here is sound classifier. So I'm going to click on this and any for all of the different functions available in ML5, 
You'll find a documentation page with some narrative documentation, a little bit of a code snippet, and then some written documentation about the, what the function names are and the various parameters and things like that. And by the way, I'm noticing now, <laughs> this will hopefully not read, this is like a mistake. <laughs> this is documentation that's actually for either body pics or maybe the UNet model, which is, does something called image segmentation. So we've got to get that fixed. I'm sure uh, many GitHub issues and fixes will be out and done by the time you see this. So in case you've forgotten how to use the ML5 library, I'm just going to show you as it's documented on the ML5 web web page. So first of all, you can go here to this quick start and you can actually just click on this open P5 web editor sketch with ML5.js added. You know what? I'm going to do that. That's what, that's the way I'm going to do it. But you also could just put a, a script tag in your HTML page referencing the current version of the library, which as I said is 0.3.1 as of today, but probably while you're watching it, it'll be a higher number. So let me go and uh, just open up this link here. And now I'm in the, um, P, the P5 web editor, you can see the name of the sketch is ML5.js uh, Boilerplate. Thank you, Joey Lee, who's a contributor to ML5, has done a ton of work on the website and all the different features. Um, and, oh, this should actually be 3.1. I'm going to fix that. Uh -huh. I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to rename it to uh, Sound Classifier. And I am going to then go over here and go to sketch.js. And I'm going to run this. And we should see, there we go. So now we know it's working because there's a little console log to log ml5.version. If I hadn't imported the ml5 library, I wouldn't see that. We see that here. So what are we going to do? Let's load the sound classifier. Now, most of the models, I haven't been using this in my previous videos, most of the models in ML5 are now actually available to you in preload, meaning you don't need a callback function. You can just load the model in preload and it'll be ready by the time you get to setup. So I'm going to make a variable called sound classifier. In preload, I'm going to say sound classifier equals ML5 sound classifier. Now, I need to tell it what model I want to load. So I need to, in here, put the name of the model I want to load. And in theory, in the future, there might be a bunch of different options, different kinds of sound classifiers, or maybe a sound classifier you've trained yourself that you want to put in there. And I'll, I'll come back eventually and show you videos about how to do that. But for right now, I'm just going to say speech commands. And then I, I already forgot what it was called. So I'm going to go back to the ML5 website which is here, I'm gonna to go to reference, I'm gonna to go to sound classifier, and I'm looking for it here. So it's speech commands uh, 18W. This is a particular model that's been trained on 18 specific words, and you can see what those are. The 10 digits from zero to nine, up, down, left, right, go, stop, yes, no. That's 18. 10 digits, eight different words. All right, so now I'm gonna go, uh, so, so it's 18W. Um, and then, once that model is loaded, I need a callback. So I could just say sound classifier classify, and I might just call it got results. So in other words, I'm, mm, oh, it's not defined, right? So I'm telling the sound classifier to classify. Now, by default, it's just going to listen to the microphone's audio. Uh, maybe in the future, in part of ML5, we'll be able to offer hooks to how you can to connect it to a different audio source, but it's basically just going to work with the microphone's audio. Then I can write a function called got results, and I need, I'm going to get rid of the draw loop because I don't need that right now. And let me just turn off auto refresh so, uh, and um, so that it doesn't keep refreshing. And then now, if you remember, ML5 employs error first callbacks meaning the callback function requires two arguments, an error argument in case something went wrong, and a data or results or some other argument where the actual stuff is. So I'm going to say error, and then I'm going to say results. And then I could do a little like basic error handling. I'm just going to say, you know, console log, something went wrong, and then, uh, and then I can also like actually log the error. Uh, all right, and then, so now, uh, and then I'm going to say console log results. So let's see if we get anything. Oh, I have to run it again. You can ignore this error. Oh, something came in. Ready? Up. I just want to stop and mention that 
If you're following this along, hopefully your browser is asking for permission to use the microphone. The reason why that didn't happen here in this video is because I've already set my browser to allow use of the microphone on the P5 web editor uh, pages. But uh, for security, you can't just access anybody's microphone from a web page without the user giving permission. So hopefully you saw that happen. Um, and if you didn't, that might be why you run into an error if you haven't given that permission. This is getting a little hard to debug just because so much stuff is happening here in the console in this huge arrays, but there's actually something that I missed that I could add here, which is an options variable. So one of the things I can tell, there's a lot of things I can set as properties or parameters for how the sound classifier should work, but um, there's a very simple one, which uh, I'm gonna just look it up in the documentation because I don't remember. It's called the probability threshold. So I'm actually just gonna copy paste this here. What this means is basically, the sound classifier is going to trigger an event where it's gonna, right now I'm console logging all of this information about what it thinks it heard based on a confidence level for how sure it is it heard one of those keywords. And right now a lot of those events are triggering because I don't know what the default probability threshold is. Maybe it was 0.7, maybe it's 0.5, but I'm gonna make that really high. I'm gonna say 0.95. So it has to have a 95%, the, the machine learning model has to calculate a 95% confidence score before it gives the event back to me in ML5. Once I've created that options variable with 0.95, I need to pass it into the constructor as the second argument. So now let me pass it in there. I'm gonna run the sketch, I'm gonna say the keyword up, and then I'm gonna to try to look into the console to see if that's what came in. Up. And there we go, look at that. Uh, now other stuff is coming in, but you saw it there. Um, so rather than kind of debug with the console, let me actually put what I said into, onto the web page itself. Also to make this easier to see, let me actually console log results index zero label and results index zero, I believe it's called confidence. So rather than have this big array logging in the console, let me do this. All right, so now we, have, we need to have a 95% confidence and I'm gonna run this. Up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm quickly adding background color white so um, to the HTML body because what I want to then do, just quickly but before I finish this off, but to finish this off, let me just add a DOM element using the P5 DOM library. I'm going to just say result P for results paragraph. I'm going to say result. Uh, P equals create P uh, um, waiting. And then right now I'm gonna say uh, result p.html. Then I can turn these results into a string by using a string literal. So back tick uh, and then put curly brackets, uh, put a colon here and uh, curly brackets and a close back tick, okay. And let me also say result p uh, style, uh, is it font size? Font size, just uh, 32 points. So we'll be able to see it. All right, here we go. Ready for this? One, two, five, up, down, left, right. Okay, so. You could imagine now what you could do with this. For example, you could control a game with your voice. And in fact, I'm gonna do that in one of my coding challenge videos. So take a look in this video's description. I'm gonna do a coding challenge where I program the Google dinosaur game. And then I'm gonna add this sound classifier to have the dinosaur jump, because it won't be a dinosaur, it'll be a unicorn, to have the unicorn jump when I say the keyword up. All right, thanks for watching this additional ML5 tutorial video about sound classification in the browser.